God bless you all in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I am excited to be here today and I pray that each and every one of you will be blessed also. Um, I believe God will bless us today. But I welcome you all wherever you are and I pray the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is love and mercy and compassion will be upon each and every one of you. Uh, the Lord Jesus is God and is the only son of the living God. And it is through him that man can have salvation. Without, without uh, the Lord, we have nothing. It is through the Lord Jesus that we have the life of God flowing in us. So I am excited about today. I want you to be um, ready. I want you to be encouraged. I'm going to fly through this like a machine gun. Pa, 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 pa. So I pray that you are prepared. Today I'm going to be speaking about a strong spirit. Amen. And this is not talking about a demonic spirit. We are talking about man's spirit. I'm speaking about a strong spirit. Amen. Why is it important for you to, uh, to know what I'm going to speak about? Because your disadvantage is always in the things you don't know. Your advantage will always be in the things that you know. Anyone that does not know is already disadvantaged. But anyone that knows is already at an advantage. I'll say that again. Anyone that is, at, uh, is in the know is at an advantage. And anyone that is not in the know is already at a disadvantage. So it is the will of God for you to be in the know of the mysteries, the secrets, and the things that God has made available for his children. The Bible says it like this. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Shall not set you free, but shall make you free. There is, a, 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 to make free and to be free are two different things. To be free is somebody coming to release you. But when you know the truth, the truth shall make you free. You will be freedom itself. There is a big difference. To be made free and to become freedom are two different things. You shall know the truth and the truth is the Lord Jesus. I am the way, the truth and the life. I am the way, the truth and the life. This is what our blessed Jesus said. So you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Not set you free but make you. So you'll be made into freedom. What does that mean? Even if a demon wants to get you, the demon cannot get you because you cannot bind freedom. If sickness wants to get you, sickness cannot get you because you have become freedom. This is why when you become free, you can make others free because you have become freedom itself. This is why the Lord Jesus said this. Go into all the world. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Why was he saying this? He did not say pray for them. He said go. Heal the sick. Don't pray for them. You heal them. You cleanse them. You raise the dead. It is because you have become the embodiment of resurrection. You have become the embodiment of light. You have become the embodiment of life. You have become the embodiment of, of purity. Because Christ is in you, you have become a carrier of those things. You have become a conduit of those things because we are the body of Christ. So, this is necessary for you to know this truth. Not in pretense, uh, not in assumption, but knowing the truth as the Lord would want us to know it is very, very, very important. If you're here, just uh, let me see some fires. Let me see some fires. Let me see some fires. Let me see some fires to know you are, you're here with me. Oh, glory be to Jesus. Glory be to the Lord Jesus. Perfect. Now, listen to me and listen to me by the Spirit of God. There are humans that are born with a weak spirit. 
and they are humans that are born with a strong spirit. There are men that are born with a strong spirit and there are men that are born with a weak spirit. Now, the human spirit, let, let me rephrase it and say it the way I, it should be said. There are people who are born with a bruised spirit, bruised spirit. And there are people who are born with a spirit that is not bruised. <laughs> but the right way to say it is a weak spirit and a strong spirit. Because when you are bruised, you are weak. When you are hurt, you are weak. I don't care how great a lion can be. If the lion is wounded, it has become weak. Is this making sense? Yes. Now, your spiritual capacity does not only depend on your soul's capacity, on your physical body's capacity, but it also depends on your spiritual capacity before the Holy Spirit steps in. Or even when the Holy Spirit steps in, your capacity must be increased, not because of his presence, but you must know how to increase your spiritual capacity in his presence. I promise you, after we read what we are going to read, you will know if you have a weak or strong spirit. I feel like you're already sleeping. Just after a few minutes, you will know if you have a strong spirit. Or a weak spirit. The management of your spirit is not up to God. It's up to you. The care of your spirit is not up to God. It is up to you. The responsibility of God is to give you a new spirit. But your maintenance of your inner man is completely on you. It's not on God. Just like your soul can be affected, your spirit can also be affected. Can somebody hear me? Yes. Your heart may not be right. But your spirit also has the ability not to be right. That doesn't mean your spirit has sinned. Even though your spirit also has the capacity to mess up. Uh, let, <laughs> let me read something to you. Oh, Jesus. Let me, let me give you a verse. Mm. This one is a good one. Uh, I pray that you're able to bear these things. Because if you're not um, able to bear this holy, it will affect you and you will not know why you're being affected yet you pray. Many of you are praying, but you're praying with a wounded spirit. Many of you are praying and the reason why the anointing cannot be revealed in power, the Holy Spirit cannot show up in power, is because many of you are operating with a broken spirit. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23. First Thessalonians verse, um, chapter 5. In verse 23. Yes. 
and the very peace of God sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So there is a preservation of your spirit, your soul, and your body until the coming of God. Anything that has the capacity to be preserved has the capacity to be spoiled. Wow. Wow. Uh, am I talking to myself? You know what? I feel like let's go offline. I feel like these guys are asleep today. Anything that can be preserved has the capacity to be spoiled. Mm. You know, language has meaning, right? Yes, sir. And if you lose the meaning of something, you lose, <laughs> you lose the power of something. Many of you, your soul, your soul, your body may be preserved. You're going to the gym, you're working out. Your soul may be getting some level of preservation because you're reading the word of God, you are in church, you are praying. But your inner man may be wounded and not preserved. Let me show you what I'm saying to be true before we go deep into this. Oh, Jesus. Psalms 51, verse 10. Psalm 51 and verse 10. Psalms 51 and verse 10. Psalms 51 and verse 10. Yes. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. So your spirit can be corrupted. Wow. David is praying before God. He's saying, create in me a clean heart. Give me a good soul. My soul is bad. But also renew a right spirit within me. If something can be renewed, it means that it can become old. It can become wounded. Is, is somebody getting this? If the spirit can be renewed. Okay, let me show you. Before I go into what proves that number one. How do you know that your spirit needs to be renewed? I will go deeper. How do you know your spirit needs to be renewed? If you can live in sin and be comfortable. Your spirit has been defiled. If you see sin and it doesn't agitate you, it doesn't shake you, it doesn't make you uncomfortable, your spirit is corrupted. Your spirit needs renewing. If you can curse, insult, say whatever that is unclean, without even your conscious alarming, you are just fine with it and you don't care. You just choose where to say it and where not to say it. Your spirit needs renewing. Because if your spirit is right, your spirit bears witness with the spirit of God that you're children of God. If your spirit cannot tell you you are a child of God, you can't talk like this. Your spirit is corrupted. Wow. Ah, somebody will hate me, but I'm telling you the truth. When your spirit has been preserved, if your spirit has been renewed, you begin not, you don't even try to get away from sin. You just don't like sin anymore. Because a pure spirit cannot mix with sin. You, okay, let me, let me show you that this is possible. Satan is a spirit. He was a pure holy angel in heaven. And he had the capacity to corrupt himself. What makes you think that you also being a spirit, a soul, and a body, you don't have the ability to corrupt your spirit. Why would David not just pray for a clean heart? Lord, I have sinned. Cleanse my heart. Give me a new heart. David went further. He said, create 
renew a right spirit. It means your spirit can want the wrong thing. Because once something is corrupted, it no longer desires clean things. This is why in Thessalonians he's saying, may God preserve you holy, cleanse you, purify you, and preserve you holy. Holy, like in full, in your completeness, your spirit, your soul, and your body blameless because your spirit can also be corrupted. How can you be a Christian in church? Shandala, ba, 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 ba. God is good, but you're jealous of your, your neighbor. You're planning evil with your neighbor. You want to see yourself succeed and not your neighbors. And you don't have anything in you that says this is wrong. Your spirit is wrong within you. If you can backbite and not care the consequences, you don't even care. You see, your spirit man makes you aware of God. When David killed his friend and took his wife, he acted like God can't see him, but he hid the fact from men. He put him in front of the line so that he can die. The man went to the war, his friend, and died. And then he took his wife in the back. It was just like, oh, casualty of war. But God could see everything. People could not see it. He hid it from man, but God can see it. If you can sin, if you don't have the consciousness that God is watching me, your spirit has been corrupted. Because your spirit should make you aware of God. If you can have secret sin, if you can have secret that, secret this, God is watching you. But your inability to know that God is watching you shows that your spirit is corrupted. Think about this. Think about this. Satan is in heaven and he's thinking evil concerning God. Satan is in heaven. Satan is in heaven. In heaven, a holy place. Thinking evil against God. Thinking that God doesn't know his thoughts. You see, the moment your spirit is affected, you are disconnected from the realities of God. No realities of the spirit, but realities of God. You think about it. When somebody joins the occult or demonic convents, they don't think about eternal damnation. They can't even think that they will end up in the fire. Even though this is a fact. It is not a reality to them. It is not because they are deceived. It is because their spirit has been corrupted. It has no capacity to perceive God anymore. May God renew a right spirit within you and within me. This is why some ministers will take advantage of the flock. This is why brothers and sisters can take advantage of each other. And sleep comfortably without anything. Say, hey, I cheated. I stole from somebody. I took from somebody. Without that consciousness, do you know why? There is something wrong with your spirit. Your soul, the Bible already is saying, the heart is deceitful above all things. It is obvious for your soul to have defects. But who corrects your soul? It is your spirit. How do you know that your spirit is defiled? When the voice of your conscience is dead. Some of you, you have done so much wrong. Stop. No, that's not right. That's not right. That's not right. That's not right. That voice starts getting faint. Before you know it, that voice no longer speaks. It has been wounded. If you can grieve the Holy Spirit, you can grieve the Spirit within you. 
You can do the things your spirit doesn't want to the point your spirit is affected. There are certain things when I'm serving God, when I'm doing what God wants me to do, or in my environment that I don't allow because it quenches my spirit. It, it agitates my spirit. Those who are always around me, they know this. There are certain things you cannot have around me. Because if you do, you're going to make me upset. And it will not be anger from the flesh. It will be anger from my spirit. There are certain things if you do, you can't be around me. This is why many times true prophets are always aloners. Prophets don't have friends. Prophets don't hang out. True prophets. It's them and their family. And their family includes spiritual children, but specific. Not all can just sit and... Mm -mm. Because anyone that doesn't have a fear of God is a danger to be around you because they can be affected. Not me, I will be affected. They will be affected. Yeah. Yeah. How do you know? <laughs> do I give you more verses or should I finish? <laughs> Proverbs 18.14. Can you read this one, Fuego? Proverbs 18.14. This one is about to be sweet. Proverbs 18.14. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear. One more time. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear. One more time. The spirit of man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear. The spirit of man can sustain his infirmities. Do you know why you break when things don't go your way? is because you have a broken spirit and you can't bear anything. You have no ability to persevere. When things go difficult, you quit. Mm. You stop trusting God. Mm. You have a broken spirit. Uh, uh, I feel like I'm, I'm in the wrong place. You know, the thing that I, 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 I observed in believers is this, is that we have this band-aid idea. Mm. The Holy Spirit will do this, God will do this, God will do that. Let me tell you something. When Satan tempted the Lord Jesus in the wilderness, he tested his spirit, he tested his soul, and he tested his flesh. When he tested him with bread, he was testing his flesh. When he told him to bow down and he will give him all the riches of the earth. Riches satisfy your soul. You don't need to go and die on the cross. Just bow before me and I will give you all these kingdoms that were given unto me. He tested his soul. Because every man's heart is to avoid hardship. We want to work hard but comfortably. We don't want to work hard and not have anything. We don't want to work hard without any guarantees. It affects you. He tested his soul. You shall only bow to God. He didn't want any shortcut because inside of his spirit there was no quit. Inside of his soul, sorry, there was no quit. Then he went further and tested his spirit. How much do you trust in the word of God that says his angels will protect you, will keep you? And he took him to a high temple and told him to jump. He tested his spirit. When things are hard, you don't believe you're a child of God. That's why I told him, if you are the son of God, turn this stone into bread. Because when you're suffering, you're hungry. The first question is, 
Am I really your child? Remember what David said. I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children beg for bread. Here is Jesus hungry, looking at bread, contemplating if it was just, looking at stones, contemplating if it was just bread. Then the devil comes and says, you are not really his son. If you are his son, then what David said should come to pass for you. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. And their children beg for bread. God just said you are his beloved son. But you're here, come, ah, it is dangerous. When you have quit inside of you, when you quit, when things get difficult, is because you have a broken spirit. Mm. Haven't you ever noticed when people are in the hospital, those who have the will to live, they don't die. Come on. The moment some, somebody just said, I am tired, it won't take long, they will die. Yeah. Mm. My brother Christian fought for a long time. The day he looked at me and said, he cried. He looked at me and he cried. He said, Lovi, I am tired. I knew it won't be long. He's going to go home. His spirit gave up. He said, nah, he told me, Lovi, I'm tired. Let me go and rest. He fought for years, seven years. And before he told me that, God told me, I am about to take your brother. Let him come and rest. And he had peace about it. He said, listen, I am tired of all this. Immediately I knew it won't take long. You see, when you have a strong spirit, you are unkillable. Mm. Do you know why God told Moses, go on the mountain and die? It's because God could not take Moses' spirit. Moses had to decide to die. His spirit was too strong. Oh, wow. <laughs> so God is negotiating with him, telling him, listen, my friend, I don't want you to go into the promised land. I can take your spirit, but because of your status, just go and give it up. Do you know that Jesus was not killed? The Bible says Jesus gave up his ghost. He gave it up. He said, Father, in your hands, I commit my spirit. He took his spirit and put it in his father's hand and then died. Your spirit should be able to carry your infirmities mm. when things are difficult. Your spirit, even though your soul is weak, your body may be weak, but inside of you there will be a strength that says, trust in the Lord. Tomorrow will be better than today. Amen. The struggle of today will not compare to tomorrow's glories. Then you're strengthened again because the strength of man comes from his spirit. This is why you can come to church. You are encouraged, but when you go out, you're weak. It's because your spirit wasn't touched. The word of God only went to your soul. Mm. It never went to your spirit. Wow. Teach us. And people with broken spirits have no ability to engage with God. In church, people will be singing, worshiping. They'll be sitting, watching. People will be lifting their hands, crying to God. They'll be just watching. They'll go on Instagram. They'll go on Facebook. They'll go on TikTok. They'll be on YouTube. While the teaching is going on, they'll be reading their own things. But they came to church in order to receive. To receive in their spirit, to receive in their soul, and to receive in their body. But they don't receive anything. And they will leave the church in their mind. They, are, they were in church. But when a storm hits, they will crash. Remember the lepers that came to Jesus, our precious Lord. They came to him. They came to the Lord Jesus. Because they were sick. But the others had no intention of following Jesus. They just wanted to be healed. They did not want to give their life to the Lord Jesus. They did not want to commit to the Lord Jesus. They did not want heaven. They just wanted to be well. Mm. 
So they came to Jesus and Jesus said, go, you have been made clean. But they did not see the miracle on their body. They started walking for days. It was a week to travel to where Jesus was, if I can remember correctly. When they went back, it was about a week, if I'm not wrong. When they got to their destination, they realized that they had been healed. One of them said, no, I need to go back and say thank you. The others were like, you go, man. We got what we wanted. Mm -hmm. The one that went back, Jesus looked. He fell on his knees and said, Lord, thank you. He looked at him and said, where are the rest? And the Bible says, and the Lord made him whole. Do you know what it means to be whole? To be made whole, it means in your spirit, in your soul, and in your body. If your spirit is not made whole, you're not whole. If your soul and, and body are good, but your spirit is not good, you're not whole. If your body is good, but your spirit is broken, your soul is broken, you're not made whole. This is why the scripture says it like this. Jesus came so that you may have life and life in abundance. The life of God always flows from the Holy Spirit into your spirit, out of your spirit into your soul, from your soul to your body. You are not called by God to only have scripture or the ways of God in the mind. God wanted this law to be written within your heart and also in your spirit. You see, when something is inside of your spirit, it is a natural reaction. You just do it. When something is only in your soul and not in your spirit, you struggle to do it because your entire being is not aligned to carry out the will of God. Wow. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Do you know why you struggle to pray? It's because your soul and your spirit are not together. So your spirit is pulling you. Let's go and have some time of prayer. But your soul is saying, no, let's just watch this Netflix show and then after that we will pray. Immediately you realize that the spirit and the soul, they are fighting. The soul doesn't want to be subject to the spirit. But the spirit wants you to pray. If you continue that, you will realize that your ability to pray, you don't even think about prayer anymore. And the day calamity comes, you want to pray. You find that you can't even pray. You start looking for, where is the prophet to pray for me? Yeah. Where is so and so to pray for me? Where is so and so to anoint me? No, you have broken your spirit. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. <laughs> oh Lord Jesus, help us. Oh, Lord Jesus, help us. You see, the word of God is like a double-edged sword, dividing between soul and what? Spirit. Dividing between soul and spirit. So you being in the word of God, you should know the distinction between your soul and your spirit. Because the spirit of God the word of God is supposed to impact your entire being. Many have made walking with God about how much money you have in the bank, mm. how good you look. The Bible says, do not fight for only adorning your outside man. Work on adorning your inner man first. If your inner man is well dressed, your entire being will be well dressed. You see, sometimes people are confused. They will look at me, oh, look at how prophet looks. Ah, look at how he dresses. He's like this, he's like that. I can cast out demons, you can't. Right. I can prophesy and hear God, you can't. Right. By the grace of God, I can heal the sick, you can't. 
But you are supposed to be the right one, but you can't. My spirit is stronger than yours. So because God has helped my spirit to be strong, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is also strong. Amen. You are a reflection of your inner man. I'll say it one more time. You are a reflection of your inner man. Everything about you outside is revealing how you are, your inner man's condition. <laughs> I've been born again 50 years, filled with the Holy Spirit. What is the outcome? And these signs shall follow them. If there is no signal, if there is no signal of a changed inner man, your outside life can't change. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. Isaiah chapter 40, in verse 31. One. And it reads, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Remember, the strength of man is from his spirit. That's what helps you to bear. That's why the Bible says, and the spirit helps our infirmities. Now, do you understand that scripture better? And the spirit helps our infirmities through prayer with words that cannot be uttered. So now the Bible is telling you the spirit of man will sustain the infirmities of a man, but a broken spirit who can bear it. You see, when, um, when people take their own lives because they lost a job and they can't bear it to the point they will take their life, it is sad. It is very sad. Um, uh, in the old house where we started the, the, the work of God, our, our neighbor took his own uh, life because he could not get a handle. And he was an attorney. He was doing well in life. But he could not get certain things under control. He could not bear it, so he ended himself. That's what happens when your spirit is broken. You cannot bear life anymore. Because to be alive is to be in pain. Do you know that? Mm. To be alive is to be in pain. The evidence of life is pain. When you are born, the first thing the doctor does is smacks you to make sure you cry. The first breath a baby takes, it's painful. That's why babies cry, because it's their first time their lungs actually expand. Because the whole time you are not really technically using them, you are underwater. Now you have to use all this, your lungs open, pain. I remember my son Andrew when he's Growing tall, uh, that my knees hurt, my uh, growing pains. When a baby is teething, pain. Mm. So true. Are you guys listening to me? Yes. yes. Now, let me explain this. You can be very strong, but if your strength is not renewed, if you don't rest, you can only sustain power for a long time. Mm. I'll give you an example. I do mixed martial arts. I love training Muay Thai, right? My ability to sustain my, my, my strength is based on the work that I do in conditioning. It is my conditioning that ensures that I can sustain my strength. So the more I work on my cardio when I run, when I work with my strength and conditioning coach, what I am doing is I am increasing my capacity to maintain power. It doesn't matter if I hit so hard. 
But if my conditioning will only allow me to throw one punch and then I am weak, mm. the devil will destroy me. This is why in all sports, the main thing people do is conditioning. Your basketball player, there is basketball conditioning. Volleyball player, there is conditioning. Swimming, there is conditioning. Even those who run track, there is conditioning. Because part of the ability to maintain your sprints, to go fast, your body needs to be conditioning to condition to maintain the power it takes to go faster. A strong punch is good, but what if your enemy can take it? And that's all you could throw. Mm. You are done. Is somebody catching what I'm trying to say here? Catching. Those who wait upon the Lord, he shall renew what? Their strength. So there is a place whereby your strength will be renewed based on your capacity. To renew strength and to be strengthened are two different things. Wow. To renew strength and to be strengthened are two different things. To renew the strength is to be refreshed in order for you to be able to exhibit the strength that you carry. To be strengthened is that more strength is added to you. So with your spirit, you need both your strength to be renewed and for you also to be strengthened. When our Lord Jesus was in the wilderness, let's read this so that people don't think I'm making this up. I don't want any doubts. I want you to really receive this so that you can really uh, um, do everything that God wants you to do. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, I want you to do this, uh, um, man of God. Go to when Jesus was in the wilderness after he told Satan, be gone. Right after. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, I'm at Matthew 4 and 10. Uh -huh. And it reads, Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Mm -hmm. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. The word ministered there is, they came and strengthened him. Remember when Jesus was about to go to the cross? Can you go there when he was praying where the stones, where yep. he was bleeding? Can you go there? Yep. Mm. Wow. The reason why the Lord Jesus prayed and said, Lord, if it is your will, let this cup of suffering pass. But let it not be my will, let it be your will. The Bible says this, it says, and the angels of God came and strengthened him. He needed another level of strength to be able to bear the journey of the cross. Bodily, we know Jesus could not carry the cross for a long time. A man called Simon came and helped him to carry the cross, an African man, because it was too heavy for him. As an African man was someone, you come and help him. And, Jesus, and he helped Jesus to carry the cross to the cross. Because he couldn't carry it. So you realize physically Jesus was weak. Inside, Jesus embraced the cross. He was ready for the cross. Because the strength that he received was not physical. It was spiritual. So the spiritual strength allowed him to bear the nailing, the weeping, the insulting. Some of you, if somebody says, look at you, loser. Me, I'm not a loser. You get agitated. Ah. Your spirit is broken. Because you have no capacity to calm yourself down. Do you have it, Musa? Read it, please. Okay, and it says, Luke 22, 42, and mm -hmm. said, 
saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine will be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. Keep going. Yeah, read it again. Uh, Luke 22, uh, verse 42. And he said, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Mm -hmm. Verse 43. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. Strengthening him. Increasing his strength within the inner man. Amen. The Bible says it like this in Luke chapter 4, verse 1. Jesus left the wilderness in the power of the spirit because he was strengthened. Wow. When he fasted, he was weak. That's why the devil could come to him. The moment the devil left, he was strengthened. His capacity increased that he did great signs and wonders that the whole nation knew about him. So your spirit to be renewed, it's to renew its strength and to be strengthened. Two different things. Notice Jesus never prayed for a renewed spirit. He only needed his spirit to be strengthened. So before your spirit can be strengthened, it must be renewed. When it is renewed, the level you maintain, now if God sends his angels or the spirit of God comes, you can be strengthened beyond where you are. When I started the ministry, when God sent me, to minister, those who are with me from the house. Sometimes it would take me four hours praying for one person's demon to leave. Liana was there. Uh, Auntie Esther was there. Eva was there for the whole thing. Luke was there. Their demons that were easy. Some took four hours. I would be praying for people from 7.30 p.m. to 5 a.m. is when people are leaving. My strength was increased. Now demons can't even last two minutes with me. Amen. Is, it, is this making sense? This is the key. You cannot be strengthened. Remember Samson prayed and God strengthened him. His hair grew back but his capacity was not good enough for where he was. God needed to re-strengthen him. Samson was strengthened again. And when he was strengthened, his strength came back. But now he had enough strength to pull down a whole Colosseum. To renew your spirit and to be strengthened in the spirit, two different things. I'm going to give you one more. This one is going to offend people, but I don't care. It's the word of God. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 17, verse 27. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 27. He that hath knowledge spareth his words. And a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. One more time. Proverbs 17, verse 27. He that hath knowledge spareth his words. And a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. So your ability to understand is also based on your spirit. Mm. Haven't you ever met people that have been in church for so long? You read the word of God, they can't understand they can't understand anything about life. They can't understand. They keep doing the same thing. Your spirit is broken. Your spirit is wounded. Your capacity to understand is not there. You read the word of God, you, mis you misunderstand. Yet you have, a, a, what is it called, a theological, you have a, a, a degree in theology. You know nothing about spiritual life. Second Timothy chapter one verse seven. Second Timothy chapter one and verse seven. Mm -hmm. 
and it reads, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of so power. So fear is a sign you are broken. Mm. Fear of the dark, fear of the future, fear of this, fear of that, fear of this, fear of that, fear, 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 fear. Something is wrong with your spirit. That's why it's saying, God has not given us the spirit of fear. Notice the spirit is small s. But what does it say? But of power and of love and of a sound mind. Mm -hmm. Notice your sound mind is an effect of your spirit. If you have no love, your spirit is broken. That's why I said, if you can backbite and do things against people and you don't fear anything, you don't feel anything, you're broken. Psalms 46, verse 10. Psalm 46, chapter 46, mm -hmm. and verse number 10. And it reads, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. One more time. Psalm 46, verse 10. And it reads, Be still and know that I am God. Have you ever met people that have no stillness? One minute Buddha, next minute this, next minute crystals, next minute this, next minute that. At the same time, Jesus, something is wrong with your spirit. You have no stillness. You see, demons are not still. They are always moving around. They are always like this. Somebody with a demon has no peace. They lack stillness. They can't just be calm. To be still that you can become before God. You can become before storms. It shows your inner man is good. Amen. Philippians chapter 4 verse 13. Now you will know what this verse means. Philippians 4, 13. Oh, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Yeah, read it properly, please. Don't read it like you're reading it for people. I read can do like all things through Christ, Christ which strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So if your spirit is broken, how can he strengthen you? <laughs> so people quote this to be bold. But that's not what this scripture is talking about. Jesus strengthens the inner man if the inner man can be strengthened. Some of you need a renewing, then strengthening. Some of you think that you can just, yeah, I can do all things through Christ. Eh, what is the condition of your spirit? I will teach you how to build up the inner man. And then uh, we shall be done. I'm going to read something for you so that to help you. Psalm 51 verse 17. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, thou will not despise. What did this mean? This doesn't mean that if situations beat you up, you have a broken spirit that God will accept. No. You see, David, David, was a man that walked with God, but he forgot to be humble before God. God opposes the proud. During this time, he was repenting because of the sin that he had committed. So he knew that by humbling myself before God, God cannot reject him. You see, many of you need to learn this. When you go before God and you say, Lord, I have failed. I did this and this. You see it all. You have broken yourself before him. You have allowed him to put you to back together. You have said, Lord, I am not hiding anything. You see anything, everything anyway. The Bible says this about Jesus. He says, he took upon himself the form of a servant. He was made of no reputation. Jesus was the most humble human being walking. When you break yourself, you break yourself by humility. When you saw Jesus, he always said, my father, my father, my father. He never spoke about himself. Yet him and the father are one. He always made it about his father. Mm -hmm. 
Break yourself before God. Don't allow situations or life to break you. That, means, that doesn't mean you're broken. That means you're bruised. Jesus chose to be broken on the cross of his own accord so that the Father can receive him as a sacrifice, as a living sacrifice. You being beaten by demons doesn't mean you are a sacrifice. <laughs> Is this making sense? Tomorrow is Thursday, right? But I'll give you one step very quickly. Learn to maintain the presence of God. This is something that uh, people are not taught, and I don't know why, but maybe some people don't have this dimension. Whenever you are in the presence of God, and you feel the presence of God, be alert and aware to maintain that presence. Because it is in that time that your spirit man is being renewed. Those who remain, those who wait, the word wait there is remain. Those who wait upon the Lord, those who remain with the Lord, the word wait there is Old English, meaning to remain. When I pray, I pray, I will be praying, oh, Father, I thank you, and, and I get into tongues maybe. And then I feel the surge of the anointing of God. I will maintain those tongues as long as I can so that that presence doesn't depart from me. Because it is within that presence, my ability to maintain that presence strengthens the inner guy. The problem is you guys will feel that presence, you will stop. The moment you stop, you disconnect it. It is in the time that power is being transferred that now you're connected. You don't let go. That is why Jesus told them, tarry in Jerusalem until the promise of the Father has come. When the promise came, they were holding on. They came together in one accord and did not stop. Until heaven was open and Father sent the Holy Spirit, they were changed forever. Their inner man, the Bible says, Peter became bold. They could speak with no fear because their inner man was strengthened. Remember, there were men in hiding because they thought they, they were looking, not they thought, there were men in hiding afraid to be killed. When the Holy Ghost came, ah, where is death? Pray until the presence comes. When the presence comes, maintain it. It is like lifting weights. When it begins to burn, you don't stop. That's when you push harder. That is when prayer matters, not just when you speak. Is somebody understanding? The presence of God and the Spirit of God are two different experiences. Let me say that because I saw somebody saying, the Lord Jesus sent his spirit and his spirit will never leave us. Uh, there is, Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He did not say the Holy Spirit will not. There's no scripture like that. That is why David said, do not take your spirit from me. The Bible says, do not offend the Holy Spirit because you can offend the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Don't confuse the two. The person of the Lord Jesus is the person of salvation. He said, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. There are a lot of Christians that are born, but the manifestation of the Spirit upon is not there. And I know men of God that were so mighty in the works of God. And because of certain things they did, those manifestations are no longer with them. Is this not true? Have you not seen it? People who are healing the sick, casting out devils, all of a sudden they can't do it anymore. Jesus hasn't left them. They're going to make heaven, but there is a disconnect with the Holy Spirit. Those are two different subjects. Jesus said, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. He did not say, my spirit. Why is Jesus warning you? Don't offend the Holy Spirit. 
Don't sin against the Holy Spirit. If you sin against him, you are in danger of damnation. Anybody that is going to hell, does he have the Holy Spirit? You know, we have to use our mind and think. Let's not just assume what God is saying and what he's not saying. The Lord Jesus will never leave us nor forsake us. Even in our errors, he will lift us up. The Holy Spirit will be with you, will be with you. If you keep doing wrong, he will pull back. It is a great sign of love. You see, many times people confuse the manifestation of a gift and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Two different things. And the presence of God himself is different. If you read through scripture, when Moses experienced the glory of God, which is the cloud of God, the presence of God, it was different from the spirit of God. When Jesus was praying and the cloud of glory came down, it doesn't say the spirit of God came down. It said the cloud of glory came down. And we know the cloud is the presence of God. It is the kabod, presence of God that is tangible. These are different experiences. They are not the same thing. Completely different. I'm a spiritual man. This is my dimension. I know what I'm telling you. I am not guessing. This is by experience. Not just by theology. Even though I can show you in the scriptures. This is not what you're thinking. There's a lot of people in churches today. The Holy Spirit is there. No people are being healed. No demons are being cast out. Why? Jesus said, if I cast out demons, I cast them out by the Spirit of God. So the churches are singing hallelujah. Oh, I feel the presence. No demon is being cast out. It means their realm of maintaining the Holy Spirit is not what you think. Because if the Holy, the Bible says it like this. The Spirit of the Lord, it says it like this. Now the Lord is that Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. If the Holy Spirit is present, demons cannot be in that place. Impossible. This is not me. The Bible says it. Mm. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Yes. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? It is not the same experience. Not at all. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? It's not the same experience. This is why people speak in tongues and do this. When they meet somebody with a powerful manifestation of God. They get confused. They start thinking, maybe they're doing witchcraft. Maybe they're doing this. No, 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 no. You are just seeing a dimension you have never seen. It's okay. God has given us different dimensions so that we can learn from others so that we can grow. No man is an island. There are things I don't know that I've learned from other prophets. I've learned from other men of God. I, I, always, say, I always say this about um, uh, a man of God that I love so much, um, uh, Pastor Vlad, I always say that he has such a grace to evangelize and go out and I don't know how to do that. I'm, I'm not a great evangelist. I want to learn. He's my friend. He's going to teach me, okay, when you're winning souls out, you do that. I know how to stand to prophesy, cast out devils to heal. That is something I know. That one part I don't know. I don't know it. I can't say I know. So I need my brother to pray for me. I need my brother to teach me so that I can be strong in that. That's how this thing works. It is, oh, Pastor Vlad is actually on. God bless you, man of God. That's how this thing works. The issue with Christians is you think you know everything and it doesn't work like that. The kingdom of God is full of mysteries. The kingdom of God is full of mysteries. I'll give you an example. Okay, I'll give you an example. There is the ability to deliver people that is solely based on your relationship with the Holy Spirit. And there are people who have been gifted in deliverance. Two different dimensions. Listen to me. Two different dimensions. This person will just stand and say, every evil spirit in the mighty name of Jesus come out. Hundreds and th depending on the room of people that are in there. People will manifest that you didn't even know that have devils. But there are other people that will lay hands on people, touch people, and then a demon will manifest. It's because the dimensions are different. They are not the same. This past week, we were in uh, D.C., in Washington, D.C. I went to a service. I taught them, and I told them, tonight in the evening, I want God to visit us mightily, and that's what the Lord is telling me. He's going to meet his visitors in a tremendous way. Prepare yourself. He is here. I prayed for 30 seconds. More than 70% of the church manifested. 70 
It was sad, but it was also joyful because now the, the house of God is free. People can actually serve God in the way they want. I know men of God that will tell people to renounce and denounce, which is good, which is perfect, which should be done. There are other people that just say, in the name of Jesus, every spirit that is here, I command you. Without even the person renouncing their witchcraft or whatever, they are delivered. Then they say, I used to be a witch. Please give me Jesus. The power of God is in realms and is in dimensions. We don't know it all. Anybody who says they know it all is a liar. The presence of God, the presence of God, the spirit of God, two different experiences. When we talk about the presence of God, we are talking about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit coming together. That is why it's called the presence of God. Remember, God is one. But when we talk about the presence of the Holy Spirit, even though within the Holy Spirit, the Father and the Son are, but the highlight is on the Holy Spirit. And the operations of the Holy Spirit is different from the operation of the Lord Jesus. Even though Jesus is God and in him dwells the fullness of the Godhead, when you experience the Lord Jesus, is different than experiencing the Holy Spirit. When you experience the Father, it is different than experiencing the Son. And the Holy Spirit. When you experience them all together, now you're experiencing God in his fullness. That is what we call the presence of God. This is why God was so shocked that Aaron could speak against Moses with their sister, I think Miriam, right? They could speak against Moses. God came down and said, listen, if they be a prophet among you, I'll speak to them in visions and dreams. God is putting a distinction between Moses who is a prophet and Miriam and Aaron who have received the prophetic. He's saying, I will reveal myself. I will make my known, myself known to them in visions and in dreams, but not so with my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my house. It means your faithfulness determines your dimension. He is faithful in all my house. With him, I will speak face to face, mouth to mouth. Even the appearance of God Shall he see? Are you not afraid of talking about my servant Moses? Moses was in a dimension that was not the regular one. Are you getting what I'm saying? These are different experiences. Some of these things we will learn when we meet Moses in heaven. Moses, how did you do it? Elijah, how did you do it? You notice Ezekiel saying, the spirit of the Lord took me. The hand of the Lord took me. Another one is saying, and the Lord spoke to me. Different. Same God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Same God. Same God. Different manifestations. This is why as children of God, humility is the master key. Humility. Humility. Humility is key. So try to maintain that. Now, somebody says separate the new covenant and the old covenant. You see, this is the problem of Christians. There is no separating the two. Jesus came to fulfill it. Do you know what it means to fulfill it? To fulfill it means that both of them, now they have come to their end. It doesn't mean that, why do you repent of sin? When people were repenting in the Old Testament, why are you still repenting in the New Testament if the Old Testament is gone? You know people think baptism is a New Testament thing. No, this thing was done in the Old Testament. But it was only for the priests. When Moses ordained the priests, he did that. When John the Baptist came and he was cleansing people, it was normal. That's why the Pharisees never fought them. Even casting out demons was not a new thing. Jesus attests to it. He says, if you say I am casting out the devil by Beelzebub, then whom do your sons cast the devil out with? It means exorcism wasn't a new thing. Some of you <laughs> studied the word of God. Don't choose what you want to pick. Okay, I will choose this one. And then I will not do this one. Why do you still keep the Ten Commandments? Why do you not lie? I thought that Old Testament is done. 
Why is killing wrong? What if you still, you say, oh Lord, forgive me, I stole, it wasn't right. Why are you repenting? The Old Testament is gone. <laughs> it is the application of the same thing is different because of grace. That is the point of the New Testament. Is that Jesus paid the price that the same things that will take so much to do in the Old Testament. Grace has simplified it so that we can fulfill it. The law is still there but if you receive Christ you are dead to the law. So now if you sin, you can repent and you avoid the penalty of bulls and goats. But repentance is still there. But now you're only using the blood of Jesus, not goats and bulls. Yeah. Nothing changes the application. Guys, it is crazy. Anyway, may the Lord Jesus bless you. May the Lord Jesus give you grace to walk after him, to chase after him. May your spirits be renewed and strengthened unto the glory of the living God that your lives will never be the same. In the mighty name of the living Jesus, amen.